Social Care Provider Resilience During COVID-19 by Safa Raz Ali. This is a general advice video to assist with the pressures that our health and social care providers are facing from the COVID-19 situation, and it's aimed at leaders within the sector. For far too long, the health and social care sector has been inadequately funded and undervalued. In this national crisis, the impact and contribution the sector makes to the welfare of us all has been appreciated by the public and recognised by the government. Care staff and the businesses that provide this invaluable service, whether they are care homes or home care providers, are truly unsung heroes. Hats off to you all! In the past, care providers have experienced many threats and challenges and generally are known to be very resilient in nature. The situation we now face is very much different and we all need to be able to support each other as much as possible and truly work together to move forward. So let's begin. The first thing to consider is communication. In fact, we will go as far as to say communication first, second and third. At all levels, individuals need the ability to raise issues and get answers quickly, and to be able to solve problems where possible, collaboratively, both internally across your business and externally. Health and social care leaders should support collaborative working by ensuring that there is frequent and easy flow communication. Our advice is that this needs to be practical, pragmatic, as well as positive. We would suggest you need to encourage all individuals that they need to take responsibility, that they know where to access and refer relevant information and what the state of play is at all times, what the focus and the priorities are so that we can all ensure that we are doing our bit. Business Continuity Plans This is no longer about a tick box exercise. Good business continuity planning assists resilience and should therefore be in place. The Business Continuity Plan BCP, needs to be updated and worked on in a collaborative way rather than in silos. Every leader within the business should have their own action and business continuity plans that is produced as a working document and not as a tick box document. We would suggest and generally encourage board members and executives within a business that they should, if possible, avoid routine information requests unless there is an intention to analyse the plans and offer constructive guidance. There needs to be recognition that some aspects of the plans rely on support from others such as heads of IT, the finance team and possibly outside partners as well. Where it's deemed possible, a provider should also offer to help peers other care providers by discussing and sharing their own local resilience plans and discussing any wider considerations such as transport or school closures. Cash flow is king. We need to recognise that reduced cash flow will especially impact home care providers as they are usually expected to submit itemised invoices for hours delivered for each person. In such cases, there may be a time lag of up to eight weeks between delivery of support and payment to the provider. Delays in invoicing, invoice disputes and non-payment of invoices will have a serious negative impact on providers' cash flow. The provider's finance team need to plan quickly and manage in detail daily and weekly activity. In this period, there are some local authorities that have offered some structured upfront payment. If you as the provider are lucky enough to get an upfront payment, then this needs to be monitored to ensure the hours delivered tally with the hours paid, as this can easily get out of sync. Cash flow can also affect residential care homes. It may be possible that local government will offer support by paying on the planned support for people in given care homes and the reconciling for any adjustments due to deaths or other factors. This is even more important as occupancy levels may become more volatile, with potentially more voids due to infection control measures possible offset by extra demand. Retrospective reconciliation. It's going to happen. Any payments overpaid will be reconciled. 
Where the time comes, this needs to be handled transparently and with open and frank discussion. Reconciliation is likely when actual levels of support differ markedly from what was planned, and these need to be managed in the budgets of all providers. All healthcare providers should be mindful of all the extra costs they are incurring during this period, and of problems they may face in reducing variable costs in such a volatile operating environment. As a provider, you should also be mindful that, where actual support levels are significantly below plan, then the commissioners may have needed to fund support elsewhere. Sick pay – the changing landscape Healthcare providers face increased cost pressures due to higher sickness absence rates among their workforce. You may need to pay staff statutory sick pay (SSP) or make sickness payments at a higher level than SSP because they have a contractual sick pay scheme, also known as an occupational scheme, which offers workers payments above the basic minimum amount of SSP, which is £94.25 per week. When emergency legislation is passed, employers' liability for SSP will start at day one rather than day four, and requirements for workers to self-isolate will further increase financial pressures. Given that in virtually all cases, providers will have to backfill sickness absence to ensure continued delivery of support, this represents a real cost pressure on providers. Please note that care provider employers are unable to reclaim payments for SSP from government, except for some temporary arrangements announced in the spring budget, which will only be available to organisations with 250 or fewer employees. Our suggestion is that healthcare providers should lobby to mitigate this by requesting funding for these extra costs and push for either a lump sum payment or through increasing the fee rate. Workforce Availability There is no doubt that healthcare providers will face higher workforce absence rates through medically recommended self-isolation, sickness and family caring responsibilities. Care providers will need to be able to deploy their staff flexibly and to hire new staff quickly. It's possible that you may face increased cost pressures from higher use of agency staff. Our suggestion is that here again the local authority should be lobbied and made aware to assist with these extra cost pressures. Some commissioners are allowing flexibility for providers in hiring and deploying staff. For example, allowing recruits to begin working after a DBS adult first check has been obtained, rather than insisting the full DBS checks are returned before a worker can begin providing care, or by allowing staff to be deployed across different care settings or between care providers. Rapid response and adjustment of support Generally, support will have to be rapidly adjusted. People will be admitted to hospital, care visits changed to meet the most urgent needs, and some home care visits will take longer due to infection control precautions and the availability of staff. In addition, care homes may need to adjust support in order to meet changing needs and to minimize infection risks. This means that rapid decisions will need to be taken by care providers about appropriate adjustments of care packages. This will likely increase your costs, as it will require extra management time to make these adjustments. There is also likely to be a higher ratio of travel to contact time in home care due to the rapid reorganization of rounds and rosters. The dreaded ECM It's become common practice for home care contracts to use electronic call monitoring ECM, to create a system of a pay-per-minute billing or to round visit times into defined bands have a built-in ceiling on upwards adjustment of hours, which may make it more difficult to make these rapid adjustments. The local authorities have on the whole recognized that these need to be removed for this period, and all providers should have received communication from their commissioners. The pay per minute also carries a significant risk to providers. In all cases, it reduces the financial viability of shorter home care visits, particularly those that are 30 minutes. Infection control – the be-all and end-all As a care provider, you will face extra costs through the need for more personal protective equipment (PPE), through the need for enhanced cleaning of care home and other premises or people's own homes, and through the need to adopt different working patterns to minimize the spread of infection. 
For example, zoning some staff within care homes. Providers may also face greater difficulty in obtaining infection control products, PPE, hand wash and disposable hand towels due to increased demand for them. Leaders in these businesses need to issue clear instructions to their teams about how such stock should be made available to staff who need them. All such pressures need to be communicated regularly, internally and externally. Don't forget the self-funders. Healthcare providers have to continue to provide support to self-funders. It's important that this is communicated to commissioners so that they have an overall picture of how the whole market is operating, rather just those providers with which an authority contracts directly. It's possible that healthcare providers may face pressures from sudden decisions by self-funders to refuse support and then refuse to pay notice periods. It's important that healthcare providers keep communicating with commissioners to give them a closer view of the issues and challenges so that they can support all health and social care providers operationally and financially to ensure resilience through this period. Thank you once again to all care providers and your teams for your hard work and continued commitment. We are certainly in an extraordinary situation and we wish you all the best to be able to mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 on your staff clients and your business. If you have any questions or comments, then please contact Safraz Ali through his social media or email.